you're about to hear the first words ever recorded. We're going all the way back to 1877, where the story of the audiobook begins. Mary had a little lamb, it screamed as white as snow, and every word that Mary went from there was you and all. Thanks, Edison, both for your delightful narration and for committing those words to the tinfoil cylinder of your phonograph. And for inventing the phonograph, of course. Back in the 19th century, if someone died, you would never hear their voice again. Now, for the first time, you could hear the recorded voice. The one thing I'm struck by is how excited people are about the technology as the next step in the evolution of the printed book. And Edison had big plans for his new invention. One of the first predictions he makes is that you would be able to record an entire Dickens novel using his device. You couldn't squeeze a whole novel into the three minutes of recording time, but some people could already envision where the new technology was headed. This picture from 1894 imagines what London would look like in a hundred years time. A miniature phonograph complete with ear tubes. Edison's design was souped up over the rest of the century, and by the 1930s, a new chapter was beginning. Welcome to the talking book. This term was coined as charities started to develop technology to support soldiers who returned from war with sight loss. So once you can play up to 15 or 20 minutes aside, suddenly you record entire books, and the first full-length recorded books are made in 1934. Every week, new vinyl records for the talking book player were sent out, and they were marked up in Braille so that veterans could operate them independently. This waxen disc will become almost like a pair of eyes to thousands who live in darkness. The average book could be recorded on, let's say, anywhere between 12 to 20 records. But something like War and Peace, I mean, that would be 118 records. So you're going to spend a lot of time flipping the disc if you want to get to the end of that story. So what books were UK veterans listening to? Parts of the Bible, Agatha Christie's The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, and Joseph Conrad's Typhoon. Some fairly safe picks, no Lady Chatterley's lover in there. But in an era marked by the Great Depression and another looming war, audiobooks provided comfort to thousands of blind people across the UK and US. The drive to serve returning soldiers had really sped up advances in technology. And in the early 50s, the audiobook was about to go mainstream. Companies like Caveman Audio had their eyes, or ears, on reaching a mass audience. Instead of worrying about whether the recordings emulated the printed book closely enough, um, Cadman tried to make the sound recordings as entertaining as possible. These stylish new recordings included sound effects and well-known narrators like Dylan Thomas, who was something of a rock star at the time. And they stop at the rim of the ice-edged, fish-freezing waves, and I plunge my hands in the snow and bring out whatever I can find. That story uh, went on to become one of the most popular recordings of the 20th century. A lot of people look back on that moment as kind of the birth of the, the audiobook industry. Congrats, Dylan, and everyone else involved, in bringing this new industry into the world. You'd still have to sit around a record player to listen, but times were changing and the audiobook would soon be on the move. In the 1970s, you get the first mail order libraries where people could send away in the post and get a set of cassettes with entire novels sent back to them. And the main reason this industry has started is for people who spend a lot of time commuting. So you're driving in the car, you're listening to your audiobook, and you're not breaking the bank? In the 1970s, it would have been about five times more expensive to purchase an audiobook than a printed book. So a rental library was a way of spreading those costs out, sort of the way a book of the month club would operate. So whether it was through your car stereo or through your hearing tubes, spoken word recordings became a central piece of so many people's lives. And tape cassettes maintained their popularity as the way to listen for the rest of the century. But watch out, analog world. Digital is coming for you. The compact disc was born in 1982, all of those ones and zeros providing 79 minutes of high fidelity audiobook. Still not exactly war and peace all in one go, but getting closer. The issue was, if you stopped your cassette tape three-fifths through your favourite novel, you could just pick up where you left off, but 
most CD players didn't have a way to bookmark your place. Sound annoying? Yeah, a lot of the audiobook industry thought so. For those who did adopt them, CDs were a popular format into the 21st century. But most published books still weren't available in an audio format. That is, until the internet changed everything. In the mid-90s, websites emerged where people could go and download audio onto their MP3 players. It might have taken a little while, but if you had the bandwidth, you could get a whole two hours of audio onto your Audible player. When people began to play MP3s on their phones, though, well, that's when audiobooks boomed. One milestone in the audiobook's history came in 2008, when the winner of the Audiobook of the Year Award was a recording called the Chopin Manuscript. What stood out about this recording was that there was no print equivalent. It just came out in audio. By 2017, digital downloads made up nine out of every 10 audiobooks sold. And they've become more and more like audio movies, full of immersive sound that puts the listener right in the center of the story. So where might they go from here? I think eventually you'll be able to choose any voice you want to hear read a text aloud. So that could just be a generic voice that isn't going to distract you, or that could be the voice of a dead celebrity. Whether you think that sounds great or slightly dystopian, the audiobook continues to develop. And as for those 19th century predictions about miniature devices that would transmit whole novels straight into your ears, well, they turned out to be pretty much right. <laughs>